Welcome to the final. Today decides the championship winner of the famous Flying Miata Super Cup series hosted on GTP. Hosted by Jason Miller, our J JT. Yep. Alright, Jason. Hosted by Jason Miller, our GT Academy winning organizing perfection addict. This series has just begun to kick off and whirl be here to witness the next big step on its path to greater glory. The wrap up of the 2011 FMSC Season 3. Brought to you by supporting sponsors Hard Dog Fabrication, Hydra ECUs, Alpine Stars, and last but not least, the Custom Miata world renowned tuning shop, Flying Miata. Thanks for watching and may the best man win. So sit tight, race fans, as we follow our drivers into the first leg of their journey qualifying of this finale race. Laguna Seca, an Enduro challenge that's going to bring the best out in the drivers that have ranked among in the three divisions that have covered FMSC in the past five weeks. This series brings together the top four drivers of each division that comprises of over 15 drivers. 15 drivers in Division 3, 14 drivers in Division 2, and another 15 in Division 1. Who we're looking at now, Mr. CSL, is the wildcard edition that came in the last second. He won the wildcard races, was set in his surprising Suzuka raceway yesterday, and was able to get the ticket on board to come and be a part of the final race. So here's our lineup. This is the grid order for the final race. And as you can see, bringing up the front end of the points over for scoring the most wins, almost a complete shutout, except for his one retirement, is Adam from Britain. And going down the line, we'll get a graphic of each car. So we have Adam leading total points going into the final race. So Nepali winning three out of the five races, being right behind him in points, only separated by a few. And then Force Induction, who is a leader of the uh, Division Two series. Adam is what most people call a true alien in that his consistency and his pure speed right off of the uh, beginning of the race is just unparalleled and we'll have to strive to find an opponent that will be able to match his pace from the outset. Only with a lot of practice, a lot of good management and smart driving will you be able to, be able to keep Adam in your sights for any more than one lap. Because as soon as the race starts, he's the type of guy who just tends to float away from you. And Apolly is no slacker in comparison to Adam. He's been racing with us for the, the past six months or so in different series and, uh, and it culminated here with the drive in FMSC where he made a really good arrival in securing the top spot in his division. I had the fortune of racing with him a few times in Division 3 and he's a clean driver, extremely experienced by this point. And a pretty funny guy. It's in third spot in the grid order of the championship point standings, which by the way doesn't actually set the grid. What you're looking at now is a qualifying, so this will set the grid itself for the final race. And they only have about let's say eight minutes left. It should be a fifteen minute qualifying or so, so a little under eight minutes to go. And as I say that we'll go check the times he was leading. Everyone's going after the uh, one minute mark. 
underneath. I'm going for the 132, which has only been done a few times in practice. But I think after these next couple of laps, it's going to be hard to get anywhere past uh, the best laps that they've set so far. So we'll be lucky to see a 32. Unless, of course, some of his retires and gets a good outlap and uh, hits a couple good laps before this qualifying actually ends. So running up the uh, next three is the uh, second finishers most of the, for this other divisions. We have a race host, Mr. Jason Miller. In second place in the first division, or the third division. And then We Freak. Coming from Canada, second place in Division One. He's had a, a lot of good races, did a lot of podiums behind Adam in uh, Division One, which is an early division, except for the Euro drivers. And then him and in the second place in my division is Spy Hunter, an extremely fast and consistent agile and Spy Hunter, a national autocross champion in real life, and uh, just as bleedingly quick here in the GT world. Bringing up our thirds, we have the surprising, I'm not going to say his name right, Ket Tiox. He came in out of nowhere and really surprised everyone with his pace. He's done an amazing job uh, getting familiarized with the car that everyone at the same time got familiarized with. Well, he didn't have the advantage of getting experience with the old car, which was the uh, 89. Uh, N.A. Miata bringing himself up to uh, third place in a Division 1, I believe. And uh, my good friend Red Revos settles in uh, third in Division thir 3. An extremely quick driver when it comes down to it. You throw pressure in and he will respond well every time. And he's one of the cleanest drivers I've ever had the pleasure of driving with. And number three in a Division 2 is our friend Outlaw, the Red Bull paint scheme, hailing out of Washington State. He is one of the more contributive and, and good going guys in the series. He's always down to help anyone out that needs a, a few tips on getting around the track faster. And he, in fact, posted a big write up on the race itself here at Laguna and telling people how to get into the pits because it is a glitchy track. Laguna doesn't fare well with a lot of drivers so I'm glad that there wasn't the uh, intended max of 15. Or at first it was supposed to be 16 but as uh, such as life goes most of the people I cut down just had uh, things come up and were able to join us and those are the people that were uh, crossed out of the list here. So who will be crossed out is uh, Minion, Longbow, Andal, and I believe that's it. We're finishing up the driver roster. We have uh, Green Narcotics, who's from Scotland and did a really good job of uh, keeping up with the big boys as he was a little bit slow in the beginning of the season but really picked it up as uh, more and more tracks came down the line that he was he seemed to be better at so the Scott joins us in the final race and then next to him is Biffy good friend Fang who's not represented by his either his GTP name or his regular PSN name. He had to buy a... He was one of the people who had a main account that wasn't his main driving account on uh, the PS3, so he needed to use his brother's main account, which is Fallen Angle. Yeah, it's just a typo. Even though it would be right... If, even if it was right, it would be lame. Fallen Angel 223. So I call him... Combination of his first and last n names. 
F A and Aiden and uh, Adam steps out a little bit. Still on cold tires, trying to do the best he can to get in these last few laps. So I call him Mr. Fang, and he seems to like it. At least I hope his brother does. After that is C S L. Coming off the east coast of the U.S., CSL is putting more miles in uh, GT5 than I've ever seen anyone put in. If uh, if he's having a good day, consistency word is is a word that you would have to use to describe him because he's terribly hard to uh, keep up with if he's really on it. And then your two wildcard wildcards. These guys came in um, at the last second to replace people that weren't able to come in uh, from the, that were in the original roster. So big ups to Gravy Davy 35 and our friend Tim, Mr. Dr. Watson, not Mr. He came in at the last second and uh, helped us secure a fuller, funner, more exciting grid. And that makes me happy. So on to the qualifying results, since most of the guys have pitted by now. Last, no one has hit the mythical 32. Looks like Anarim is uh, rightly so, in his continued domination of the series, secured pole for the final race. The 33 flats around Laguna Seca. Which, if you want to try it for yourself, just get a stock Miata TC go around on Sportsoft with the uh, time we're on, you'll see just how crazy that time is. First induction hasn't got much practice time even though he should make a better showing if he was in his usual uh, pace. Sorry if you can't read that. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Looks like we'll have Adam. And then, wow, well, there's only three guys in the, or four guys in the 33s. Adam, Nepali, Outlaw, then CSL, who's done an awesome job, well deserved wild card racer. And then, oh, Nepali just put a faster lap up, 33.5. Good on him. It'll be uh, forced induction with a 34 flat. Green narcotics with 34.1. Oh, no, no. Right behind? Whoa, that's close. They're only separated by 100. Forced induction, then spy hunter. But we'll see the grid when they line up just now. Uh, we'll have a few minutes left. Looks like every, uh, everyone's being called back to the pits. So we can get this race started. This unusual straight with an edge Laguna starting grid. And at the back, looks like it might just have to be my friend Fang. He has most of the time yet. No laps done by him. I'll run out the top. Eleven. King of excuses. I'm just kidding, Forrest. He's off the pace by an entire second, off of Anarim's time. He'll be fine. In a race, con in race conditions, you can uh, bet that Forrest will make his way through the grid, through the uh, field nicely. Yeah, sentiments reverberated. In CSL.
Boeing Pit Stall Stalling brought to you by Mazda. Mazda Laguna Raceway. Mazda. I'm gonna make sure you get this grid order exactly right. If it's wrong at all with the race start, we're gonna have to call the race off and try to reorganize the grid manually. Hopefully, uh, it should work out because we've gotten this system hammered in since the big mess up over at uh, Custom Track, Twin Cities Raceway, and Spa. So. Everyone here will be good with the uh, grid start and making sure that everyone's in the right spot. And it should be 12 R1600 Turbo. Jason Miller has dropped out to uh, fix uh, fix the room and get it started, making sure everyone is in the right place. He's in the lobby. He'll be joining the track shortly. We Freak wasn't able to make it either, even though I had him listed. That was like a last second drop. It happens, it can't depend on anybody. Not that he had anything wrong himself. I'm sure he had something much more important than online video game racing to go to, but it would have been nice to have him. Hopefully he's doing something awesome like snowboarding, otherwise it's going to be kind of a bullshit excuse. Let's go through the list of drivers one more time so you can get some uh, familiarity in. <laughs> Biffy's way too used to this formation laps. There goes RT. Ready to start this thing. 30 seconds to launch. Get ready for the sleigh. Merry Christmas, we're ready to rock. Let's see if we'll catch anyone going off with a false start. Three, two, two, one, go, go, go! And off to a very slow start. 
Not much moving yet. Here they go into the first turn. Lining up very nicely. These are all very tidy drivers, not going to do anything crazy in the first stint. Nice train going through turn one. Andretti here. Heading into turn two on their way up to the hill. Looks like Nepali's caught good chase on Adam. He's right on his bumper. Tending to keep that draft as long as he can. Because he knows that's the only hope that he'll have to uh, possibly snatch a victory. He has tons of time practicing around this track. He stayed up until like 4 o'clock in the morning his time just running lap after lap. So he will not be an easy opponent to shake. RT dropping back just a little bit. Staying on the safe side. Oh, there he goes. Almost going into the dirt, coming out of the scorch screw. Nepali, this is one of Nepali's tracks. He's one of the best Laguna drivers that I've ever seen. I only beat his pole in WSGTC by one thousandth of a second, so I definitely know he can run this track to the max. The only thing he's lacking is a little bit of focus, so if he can just get that bit in, he'll sure have... A, ch a challenge for the top spot. And going to the middle of the field, Forced stays at a sixth spot, giving uh, CSL a little bit of a run for his money. But Spiner is right there. Two national autocross f champions, fifth and sixth, or sixth and seventh, excuse me. And these cars are all identical, no tuning is allowed. The uh, tuning restriction feature in the lobby is selected, so the only thing that they can change is brake bias. Going back up to Nepali and the front of the pack. As they go to Rahal straight through that terrifying turn every time. Adam went a little wide, trying to get a break possibly in the draft. Nart is right on Nepali's tail. Telling him, hey man, I'm still here. What happened in that first lap? I thought you were doing good, buddy. Let's try to catch up to Adder. Yes, that is not a 25 in the lap counter. That is 52 laps. This is a true mini enduro. So, uh, you can all place your bets on how many little pits you think they're going to make. Yeah, they don't make the pits. Pit stops. I'm sloppier than the drivers, how is that possible? Ooh, Nepali's just out of reach. But I'm sure Adam's still not feeling too much of the pressure. He's still whistling along. He's doing his, whoa, cut a little grass. But I think that was intentional. He does drive it to the limit. Look at those tires rumble. CSL he's stuck in the pretty much the middle of the pack these guys are all driving incredibly well this is the final race but they, they are all finalists for a reason you won't see much cleaner driving oh as I said clean oh there you go someone off is that spy hunter yep 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 or outlaw. One of them went off in that ridiculously hard turn going up to Rahul as they head down Rainy Curve. Now one thing you're gonna have to uh, know about RT is that he's not gonna make any desperate moves. He knows how to race. He knows that this is a long race and he's not gonna make any desperate moves on Apali at all. In fact, he might. I wouldn't be surprised if he helped them catch up to Adam just a little bit so they can stay in his draft as long as possible. And that is the entire A strategy of the room. Catch Adam and stay there. Or else he'll run away with the baton and you will never see him again. As the middle pack heads into Andretti here. Pin. Ooh, we got side by side force induction and. I don't know, that's Spy Hunter and Green Narcotics. 
Looks like Green just lost it going into the first turn. Give position up to Spy Hunter even though they're back right where they started. And he is on a chase. Green Narcotics is an excellent passer. I've had the uh, misfortune of being passed by him a couple times in the uh, few races that I attended. Puts the pressure on. He uh, takes a peek, lets you know he's right behind you. And the worst part is he doesn't give up his position easily at all. Senna Lycan is opposed to driving. Oh, Gravy Dave takes a little bit of a dirt going out onto Rahul. Rahul, the Rahul brothers, Rahul family. TNJ stays in uh, Feng's rear section. Ooh, it's CSL a little twitchy going through that uh, funny turn from second to last. They all line up in the straight, and then we got two or three packs of drivers going. The, uh, when you get into GT race and you have uh, packs of three going and they're like little caboose cars in a train, they all have their own little, uh, they act as one pretty much. So you got guys leeching off of each other's draft, bump drafting, and uh, pretty much becoming one car essentially as they drive around the track in a race. And it looks like uh, Outlaw's pulling a He's pulling okay laps, but uh, he's going to have to pick it up if he wants to catch up to uh, RT. As we'll check the times hit so far. Ray Hall. Yeah, Mule's right. Rahul. Steven's right again. Brilliant job of correction. Yet again. So only three guys have hit 33 so far, and that is the top three. That's just why they're pulling such a good gap on Outlaw, who's just out of reach of the podium. But we still have a lot of laps to go. Looks like the top three is spread out pretty evenly. Yeah, when you can't see another car with that view, pretty much three cars. There's three cars ahead and three cars behind the cars around him. There's the gap. Steadily increasing as uh fight for tire conservation begins. His last six laps have gone by quickly. This is a short track, but it takes a whole of a minute and a half for the Miatas to make their rounds. And that's pretty quick compared to standard uh, spec Miata SCCA times, which are around the 145 mark in real life. But these are lighter, faster, and more racy. No budgets here. So we'll leave Polly. See what's going on in the frustrating but fun mid pack. Looks like Force is right on CSL yet again. Can make that pass or possibly uh, keep some strategy going because he knows or he at least thinks that he's off pace here. He could definitely challenge for the podium if he gets a pit strategy uh, down better than the uh, current leaders. Which is yet another thing that could throw this uh, throw a wrench in this entire race. You just don't know who's going to get lucky with the pits, who's going to glitch out, who's going to make the uh, risky moves that pay off in the end with pit strategy. All the track that he can. Mm -hmm. 
That's just a slight lift for uh, turn three. You always want to take it a little bit faster, and if you take a little dirt sometimes it's just fine. On our way to the corkscrew, looks like CSL is having a fun time uh, sticking the outlaws closely as freaking possible. Force drops just a tad behind within the sights of Spy Hunter. I'm sure it's frustrated at this point. It looks like something might have happened earlier in the lap that we didn't see. Everyone seems to be rocking those Samson or the Simpson helmets too. Might have them in real life or something. I'm surprised Reese hasn't made more of a showing. Seems to be settling for ninth spot. It's Biffy right behind him. Catching up in his draft. This Balaclava and full Oh, that's the Sebastian Loeb special. Rally driver in a Miata, yep. No navigator though. I wonder he's in 10th spot. Ooh. Let's see what the gap is now between the top five or so. That three seconds from uh, Nepali to Adam. Make that up. Just under two seconds between Napoli and RT, which RT could definitely make up in a drift if he really puts his foot down, so to speak. He gets a little aggressive. Doesn't want to uh, fall back too behind because he'll end up having to fight to stay in it and uh, throw his tire wear away. But uh, if anyone's good at conserving their tires, it'll be RT. The one thing I remember from him that struck me the most, the earliest, was when we did the very first preseason uh, Spec Miata race back in December last year at Suzuka East. Whoa, he goes off in the last turn. Takes some of that green crew that everyone loves. And back to the story, I remember him showing up late because he had gotten his internet connection up just before. He set up the entire Spec Miata series on his phone. <laughs> before he finally got an internet connection and was able to actually get on the track with us and when he finally did he just destroyed the competition and he looking back at the tire wear was just a study in conservation because his tires were like a full 25 percent less worn than the uh, two other guys that were racing with him which is why he was able to uh, really stay in the fight with them but uh, pull away from more and more as the race wore on those are fun times but now it's got a little bit more serious, so you have to depend on these guys to uh, make the mistake of fighting out with each other at the front, because not only are they spread apart, but uh, they've gotten a lot more experience in sin as well themselves. I will run through the field and look through the tire wire real quick. You know, it's pretty early, you won't see much till around lap 15, or much difference that is. It's like Napoleon, well, see, as I speak, RT has better wear. Don't know how he does it, he's a freaking wizard. <laughs> Adam and Nep are about the same, virtually the same. He's just got a little bit more, but it's definitely showing for something, and it will show as the race goes on. You'll see what I mean. Outlaws, same level as the one and two drivers. CSL's got a better. Just the tent, but better wear just because he's been behind Outlaw the whole time. And here he goes for your side by side. Not gonna happen. Outlaw, this is one of Outlaw's tries for sure. He definitely uh, knows how to uh, defend here, especially. Oh, Force took a lot of dirt. It looks like his tires might be messed up, but so did Green Narcotics right behind him. Doing the clue, and he's off, taking a full four tires in the dirt, and he has lost, definitely lost traction. And his tires are pretty worn down. He must have spun out or something. Uh, it's not at the same level as the drivers around him. Might continue to fall behind. 
he got caught up in the pressure of this final race. In the 10th lap of 52, this is the Flying Miata Super Cup race finale to decide the championship winner. They'll take it all. Speaking of which, the prizes that are going out to the Adam, <laughs> if he doesn't mess up, that is, are pretty cool themselves. He'll be getting a $50 gift certificate for Alpine Stars to get anything he wants off of the site. Hopefully the shipping isn't too much of a problem. He is in the United Kingdom. And uh, along with that, might be getting some Fly Me Out of merch, which would be a very nice addition on top of that. On top of the cake of trophies that you get by being a Fly Me Out of Super Cup driver. Whoa! That was a close one. The camera caught up right in front of its car. And that was pretty cool. Hearing that nice roaring engine, the Mazda. So loud, so aggressive. These engines are terrifying. I also run a Fly My Auto Super Cup um, branch in Forza Motorsport 4 called, guess what, the Fly Me Auto Super Cup Alive. And that's those cars uh, don't sound like the meanest machines around. In comparison, actually, this is these Miatas sound like uh, space shuttles compared to a pack of honeybees in the Xbox version of the series, which is why I'm thinking of stepping it up to a faster Miata from the game, maybe a uh, an NC. That's neither here nor there. So, in our attempt to run through the tire wear one more time, as we saw before, the top five are pretty much the same except for RT and Outlaw, who are, or NCSL, who are just a tad bit better when it comes to the rubber. Forrest is doing okay. He's got pretty even tire wear compared to the rest of the guys, but uh, he has been running those rear tires a little bit more than the others. Spy Hunter looking good. Green starting to fall off more and more. Reese TNJ, Mr. Fang. Whoa, he's got really bad tire, just as bad as Green Narcotics. Gravy Dave E. About the same. And uh I'll run through the GT Academy finalists who are in this race. There's only oh well, actually there's only Jason. Force got cut out at the last second. I'm going to Florida. Reese is definitely part of the community, but didn't get close to being a finalist. And Adam, I'm sure if he, if Adam ever decided to take up GT Academy, he would do pretty uh, brilliantly. Don't know how he'd do on the track in real car, but whoa! And here goes a pass on Nepali, and he's made it, going into the corkscrew side by side. Nepali goes back around, takes the inside line, defends his position, closes the door, and very effectively tells RT to calm down. Looks like we're starting to see a bit of RT's strategy. He's getting frustrated staying behind the poly so much. He knows he has a faster pace and his tires are a little bit better, so he might just try to go around and uh, get a good spot and be able to get in between Man Adder and to get a, either an early pit or just a, cleaner, a clear pit so he doesn't have to worry about it so much. He is in his draft again. He might, have to, he might get another good pull on him side by side going into the first turn. It's different now. You can't depend on it as much as you, we used to and before respect too, so definitely more realistic we like it but at the same time it gets frustrating when you're in the middle of a race trying to pass like you used to and he has really kicked it into gear RT is not gonna let off of Nepali's rear let's go through turn three and side by side again Got passed here by our team myself in the final, and we went wide, and I just let him have it. Oh, but uh, Nepali's not gonna let him have it as they go up to the the left turn in the beginning of Ray Hall. Oh my gosh, that was close, and he's off. But he, uh, wow, he recovered pretty well, even though he's trying to shake some of that dirt off of his tires, which won't help, by the way, which. It would be nice if he could, but... Whoa, he really brought it back together well after that off. The traction going to the corkscrew is scary, scary stuff. 
and he is calm. So that was his volley. That was RT's attack. We'll have to see if he can get back into it. And Polly's pretty happy. Got to be pretty happy about that. I'm sure he's smiling, thinking, I just shook off the boss. Oh, it really was an amazing recovery. If that was me, I would have been just gone. Taking that much dirt, going into the corkscrew is, is just so sketchy. And he's back. The gap between them, he's actually caught back up just a little bit. It looks like there's only about a two second gap between them at the most. Might be a second and a half. So we go to the gap, see how far ahead Anarm is now. Seven seconds and two seconds between Napoleon R2. And two seconds between outlaws who's used the uh, unfortunate offing of RT, not offing, <laughs> the shunt, the, s the off, whatever you want to call it. Oh, and CSL made a pass. Let's get back to the screen, cameraman. CSL's gone around, outlaw finally. Looks like it happened right at the beginning of Ray Hall. Nice. Wish you could have saw that. Oh, and they're side by side. Very clean through the bottom of the corkscrew, which is a one of the hardest places to go side by side with anyone with through. And Force Induction is giving him some confetti for the party as well. He's not going to let them have an easy time. He's hoping that they'll mess up on each other and he'll be able to get around both of them. So he's putting the pressure on, definitely. We got the green, we got the blue, and the orange. I think they're Fanta cars. <laughs> a lot going wide, letting Forrest in through the side. Closing. Oh no, he let him by. He went a little too wide. Side by side still. Going into turn two. Outlaw goes ahead. Stays right behind CSL. Takes a little dirt. No problem. Taking turn three. Trying to catch back up to CSL, getting into his draft. Looks like RT caught right back up to Nepali as well. Yep, there he goes. Nepali is really starting to show less pace. Now he doesn't have a character chase, it's a little harder because Adam is just riding off into the sunset. Let's see if he can get enough, close enough coming out of the final turn to pull a, a slingshot and get it right around Napoli. Challenge for the uh, second spot for us, the loser. Uh, looks like he got a little too close. He pulls there, they're side by side. I don't think if Napoli defends enough, then he won't be able to get around, no. So starting that uh, slingshot at the very beginning, staying that close, isn't the most effective way of doing it. Oh my god, they're inches apart. Bumper to bumper. And probably has got to be scared right now. Beautiful driving on the part by uh, both of them, though. Side by side going into turn four. Oh, Navali loses a little bit. RT stays on the safe side, lines up behind him, saying I'll try again. He's giving him all the pressure in the world. Napoli is sweating right now. As he goes by and going down to the corkscrew to the left to the right. Keeping it clean. He's like, didn't you just have an off back there? Wasn't that two laps ago? Or am I just tripping out? <laughs> now it's Nepali's turn to make chase. CSL in the background there. 
as they uh, fight out for position. It's not the uh, fastest way around the track. It's the, more, the more you fight, the more you go side by side through these turns, the uh, slower you get, obviously. So it gives you the opportunity to people behind you to catch up a little bit since they might be, they might be more train-like in their approach <laughs> instead of a uh, jet fighter dogfight-like. Holly staying right with it. The field is shaping up. Unicatic's tires are falling even more. Well, everyone's are. Looks like he might. Looks like everyone's going for a three stopper, so stopping in a lap. Uh, now, actually, it's a good time to stop because you have, what, 18 laps, and another 18 laps would be uh, 36. Another 18 laps from there. Uh, well, like, they might be going for a one stopper. No, well, that's too much. 25, 26. Well, it's doable. Oh, it was Adam. <laughs> I joined Adam at the right time. Took a lot of dirt on that second turn. Outlaw is taking his spot back. Looks like he might have made a pass in the first turn. The first induction is still in the same spot. Giving them the heat. Spy Hunter is slowly creeping back up to that pack. Oh, side by side, bumping and banging. True spec me out of form. AKA Spec Piñata. Piñata. <laughs> that allowed uh, Spiner to get a, even more traction. And there goes first pitter, is almost Adam's pitted as well. Yep. No, Adam stayed out. He's going for the two stop, but these guys are going for the three. Er. <laughs> Adam is going for the one stopper. And it looks like. RT might be thinking the same thing as well as CSL unless they pick on the very next lap in which their strategy would then be first stint and throwing it away I'm going to do as best I can as long as I can pit late get a good second stint in and then get a more uh, manageable third stint on really good tires that just sprint it to the end. Nepali is one of the two stoppers. So he drops back to seventh place. No traffic. Like Tim's duking it out with green. Tim's gotta be happy to be in this final race. He was a second place finisher in the wild card race, which uh, eliminated him.
Oh no, Adams. Well, 20, 20, 40. So he's going for a two stop or two then. And is RT going for one stop? Looks like Jason might be going for one stop. Let's see if it pays off. CSL again might be thinking the same thing. It looks, or at least seems like to me, that Adam was intending on his strategy, or he's going to choose a strategy depending on what the other drivers are doing. So he went to lap 20, or well, 19 before he pitted because he wanted to see what RT would do, and now that he knows he's going for the one stopper, at least I think he is, Adam. He's saying to himself, well, I'll just two stop, and uh, that is the more reliable uh, strategy. So, all I have to do is just keep it on the track, do my fast laps, and I should have it. We're on lap 20 out of 52 on the FMSC World Championship race. Now, the race started with Adam on pole and Nepali right behind him. with RT, so the field is spread out after the uh, first batch of pit stops. So the true leaders with the other guys not p having pitted yet, oh and there's RT into the pits. Forget everything that I said, he just made a very late first stop. <laughs> CSL, that <laughs> could be the uh, guinea pig. He made a very slow run through turn one, he is the race leader, but has not pitted, he's yet to pit. He's certainly not a slacker around this track. He's tested here a lot for the uh, Pure GTTS series. So he should know every nook and cranny, except that one where he went off. <laughs> but his tires are dead. So he's doing a pretty good job for. Uh, Taking a lot of dirt, he's not having a easy time getting around with these tires. Let's keep it on the track, CSL. Got you've only got Adder behind you. Ooh, yep. Go back to RT. He's right behind Nepali, who pitted earlier. But that's pretty much two and three. Just have green narcotics, so I don't believe it's pitted yet. And Tim, who's yet to pit as well. Going back to Outlaw, might have Spy Hunter on him. Nope. And a sizable gap between the front and the back of him. Forest Induction's falling behind Biff. I don't know if he's pitted. Oh, yeah, he's pitted. You can check by the tires. <laughs> Look at the tire indicator. It will tell you who is pitted. So we'll run through that. Fang is not pitted. Spyander has pitted. Outlaw? Yes. Green Narcotics? No. RT? Yes. Nepali? TJ? TNJ? Tim and Jennifer. Mm, nope. Matter. Of course. CSL knows. So we have about four guys, a handful that have not pitted yet. And it'll really be interesting to see how the strategy plays out. If they do, in fact, have one. Reese just pitted. Gravy Dave is not. He's having a lonely race. Too bad. Ooh, Nepali is using. Is that Adam? No, okay, figuring out. Who is right in front of Nepali? Nobody. Oh, he just went into the pits, and that was Tim, yeah. He was using Tim's draft a little bit to, do, to get a pull on RT. 
but now he's gone, so he's fighting in clean air once again. Oh, well, that wasn't Tim that pitted. Tim's right ahead of RT. What happened there? Cameraman's just as confused as I am. But wasn't how did what? <laughs> so the theory goes that Nepali got around Tim and RT just got cut up. And <laughs> being behind a back marker that hasn't pitted yet is one of the more frustrating things in racing. But Tim's good about uh, getting the blue flag, which I just wove. And let him by. The fight continues for the podium. CSL, see how fast or how close he is to Adam now. Adam's right behind him. He's like, huh? A potential draft buddy. See how long this lasts. If I was Adam, I'd be giving CSL a definite. Um, Bum draft because uh, you turn, you, you tend to turn faster laps, even though you just have better tires. Oh, there he goes off once again. It's going to slip and sideways. <laughs> oh man! Right now he's thinking to himself, "This one stopper could work, but this is going to suck at the end of the race. If my tires are just like this again, and he's got to go another two laps." At least he'll probably put in the next one. Or this lap here. It's just becoming impossible. Sorry about the frame rate, I don't know why it's skipping. I'm not streaming anything. Besides this. Ah, sorry about the frame rate. I think someone's using something. I'm gonna go check it out. I'll be right back. Up 25 and 52, that we're at the halfway mark of the Flamier Super Cup finale, which will decide the championship winner and the prize getter of the series. And CSL went for just one more round. He's sure to pin in this one. He's not crazy, that is. It's still known 
breaks into the 32s. And again, sorry for the slow performance of the stream. Something's impeding my network and I have no idea what it is. That's okay, because you can still make out what's going on. It'll help. It's the tad, and it's a little bit from my commentary. So we have Tim finally stopping himself as well. Going for the one one stint left. And you can uh, depend on the two stoppers to start coming into the pits around lap 38 or so. Lap 30, late, late 30s at least. Before it's taking a bit of beach on his chase for fifth place, securing a top five. Five. Spreading out more and more. <laughs> Getting past the halfway mark of this endurance race. A test of endurance and stuff. <laughs> no bathroom breaks, by the way. <laughs> Off to the gap, shall we? He's brought it down just a little bit. Adam's still on the limit. North East Tires are still cold. This field, this, this entire field is, uh, like, it's there on every corner, almost, at the same time. That's how spread out they are. Messages? Nope. Spot this map wide open. Blah. So the red arrow is chasing the blue arrows. The red arrow. Red arrow. Who are the two close blue arrows? Oh, that's green narcotics and gravity? No. 
That's Gravy Davy about to get lapped. <laughs> flashing his high beams, right? Gravy responds by wiping his windshield. Very clean. Yeah, Fang got disconnected, but um, seems like the only casualty so far. So it's better to compare, better than the uh, earlier race I was in, where I had about four or five disconnections. Servers are a little bit off today for whatever reason, so there might be a lot of sufferers out there since Sunday is a popular day for racing, both in the virtual world and in the real world. It is Monday in Japan, so maybe they don't care. There's two, two blue arrows, they're close to each other again. Let's check out the action, what's going on? Still, <laughs> still gravy. Wait. There's two blue arrows going up to corkscrew that are close together. Oh, CSL coming up on better tires. Look at the difference. CSL's like, I'm gonna one stop a fool. The tires are messed up. What's up with the windshield wiping? <laughs> As soon as GT5 gave us, or Inspect 2, when they gave us the, the, the opportunity to change our uh, button assignments on the GT20, on the G27, first thing I did was take off the windshield wipers and I replaced all that with camera controls. So now I just have the flashes. Come on, Spy Hunter. Not Spy Hunter Forced. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, and there goes a pass. Easy. Forced went off, and its tires are screaming with sand. Checking the laps. Checking the laps yet again. So, it looks like the fastest lap will surely go to Adderm for his 33 flat. A repeat from his qualifying performance, which is virtually identical. Adam and Nepali have faced off before in the GTP Honda Integra World Championship run by Mule 1942 and even though whenever Adam showed up to a race he would dominate kind of like here, Nepali ended up being a champion because he showed up to more races. Adam is looking, gonna look for retribution tonight as he is well on his way with 20 laps left becoming champion of FMSC Season 3.
considering a vote to have Adam be the only guy with winner's ballast. The winner's weight ballast, like in the Super GT and some different racing series around the world, is a pretty useful tactic to level the field off. Definitely works in the few races that have, or the few series that have been that used it, so. It's still Adam uh, being in the WS GTC in the GT300 class took on a full 200 kilograms of ballast at the Laguna Seca race that we featured, which is around, I think it was race 6. So he had won so much that he accumulated all this weight, and by the time we got to Laguna he had 200 kilograms in a Subaru which had ho already tire, horrible tire wear, so... Um, he still won the race, and it was just one of the more amazing performances I've ever seen in uh, GT5, and I was in the GT500 class racing on the same track as him, so I witnessed a bit of that myself. So even though, like I said, the winner's weight thing would uh, could possibly bring the field closer together, but it would still... Uh, be a challenge to keep up with Adam as he increases the gap to Nepali by another full second. Which puts him right at the uh, the alien to uh, human average gap ratio of 10 seconds. But an enduro, if you, if you finish 10 seconds behind him, that's still pretty good. I've finished the whole lap behind him for 40 seconds. I'd be happy with 10. closest I ever got to an alien was a five lap sprint race around Laguna Seca in the Super Laguerra car which was the Nismo um, qualifier car for WS GTC season three and I finished only one second behind him I actually passed Tony for the first time ever <laughs> Adam has been uh, giving it to Tony really Hard in the last few pure races, winning, shutting out the first race at Spa, or the first race at Suzuka, excuse me, and uh, taking another win at Spa in the sprint race. Definitely one of the faster GT drivers on earth. Not too sure about RT's pace. Looks like he is. Floating around two seconds behind and they're probably still, but it's hard to tell whether he's, you know, it's turn by turn, he's either falling by a little bit behind or a little bit, doing a little bit of a catch up, but <sighs> the only thing you can hope for is for Nepali to crack under the pressure and. It's always a possibility. Let's switch to a pretty view, yeah? Take off all those ugly markers so you have no idea what's happening. It's a beat track, she is. Joining the action, or lack thereof, in the middle pack. CSL's worked his way up to a sixth spot right in the middle as he gets through the uh, first half of his. Well, not even yet. He's, he's going up to the half of his second stint. Long stint. He's dreading the quirks here right now. In the future, that is, thinking about how he's gonna have handle those last few laps. What if someone's behind me? What if I'm right behind someone else? I just don't know. Is 
outlaw goes through the corkscrew. On his continued charge for a good top five finish. And it probably goes in a pit a little bit earlier. Darcy's gonna stay at her another few laps. Who's in there with him? Metis. Look like Spider is by them. Who else pitted? Oh, it was RT, okay. <laughs> Keeping it uh, sane, pinning the same lap. Now it comes down to it, uh, Artsy's gonna give it his all. The CSL is throwing a wrench into that equation, coming out on uh, this second long stunt. Have you ever played Fallout? The uh, view that RT is looking at right now is a lot like the. Uh Wait, what was it called? The view where you pick out the uh, what parts of the body you want to hit. CSL makes a surprising move on Nepali, getting ahead into fourth spot, right behind the, uh, the two drivers who haven't pitted yet, Spy Hunter and Outlaw. And Nepali took his position right back, right to turn one. And that's nothing but good news for RT. Is it uh, causing the fall back just enough for him to catch up to them? But at the same time, RT's got to pass CSL, so as they take the exact same line going through Ray Hall. Down the corkscrew. Keep it on the inside, Napoleon. and you can take this. Second place. Feels like a fight for a win, but it's good enough for them. And this pack will jump ahead of Spy Hunter and Outlaw, who hit a little later. And off they go on to the final stint, closing stages of the final race of FMSC3. Ooh, and I'm the wrong person yet again. That looked like an amazing pass on CSL in the first turn. Get out of my way, dude. I gotta catch nap. Closer and closer. 
but at the same time, CSL might be able to make a move on him once they get into the front straight. So RT has it in the back of his head as well. Sweet helmet, by the way. Haven't seen that one yet. Let's go through the final turn. Lap 38. Let's see CSL can make a run up. Looks like he botched the last turn a little bit and fell back a little too much. Three hundred ready hairpin. It's going over to Nepali. Joe Wawo. And that is a sizable gap. But not a out of the question sort of gap. And he's going to want to pass early. He, kn he knows the um, longer he waits, obviously, the harder it'll become to get by him. Alternatively, he does have the benefit of being in Nepali's wake, so to speak, so his tires will, again, as time goes on, as laps go by, will be better th off than Nepali's. CSL is doing a great job in the uh, one-stopper strategy, but he is falling behind more and more as the turns go through. As we join Spyheader with a purple Tim right behind him. He's also under one stop. Tires, tires are just starting to fade into the darkness. Oh, gap closes up a little more as we go through the first turn. RT probably got a good run on him on the front straight, so still got 20 laps or 10 to 12 laps to go. The sky is quite bright. So this is essentially a sprint race to the finish, and Nepali does have. Uh, the pace advantage just a little bit but he did qualify ahead of RT so but now it's a question of consistency it looks like Nepali is slightly breaking under the pressure and RT gives him a little more going through the corkscrew the mirror is full orange Taking a sort of a sallow dive. Final turn. Right in the pocket. Let's see what RT can do going into the first turn. Under the bridge. Over the hill. By the cones. By the plates that were knocked down from heavy racing earlier in this event gap closes up just a little bit again and he's telling him very rigorously Sorry, that made me cough. He went off. Took more sand than he might have been comfortable with, but he recovers again nicely. Doesn't phase him. It's just a little dirt. No big deals. All I'm focused on is this black and green combo in front of me, who I haven't raced yet. None of the, well, I mean, most of the drivers haven't really faced off of with each other yet because we spread the field out through three divisions to suit different people's times since we had European drivers and, and people who couldn't uh, race earlier in the day here in the States so we had a time of uh, 12 o'clock Pacific 
3 o'clock Pacific, and I believe it was 7 o'clock Pacific, and uh, these two were in separate divisions, so this is actually the first time they've really raced, um, besides having faced each other in practice. They have dabbled in other series before with each other, so they definitely know how each other, what their abilities are, how clean they are, where they'll take risks. It's all good info to have when you're in a battle coming down to it like this. Looks like Outlaw made a pass on Spy Hunter or something. No, CSL. Nope. There's only two blue arrows close to each other. Let's see what Adam is facing real quick. Is that Davy Davy again? Huh. Go down rainy curve. A random spectator just left the room. It's got to be annoying on the fast turn. And Jason's definitely going to get a run on him this time. Let's see if he can close it up enough to get side to side. Nope. But he is definitely close. It is tough following an Apollo when he's on it this well. Silky smooth through turn three. Turn two. Now this is turn three. Oh! Saying hello to the dirt a little bit, doing some gardening. I'm gonna turn four. Challenger appears, traffic in the form of Gravy Davy who's in front of them, a back marker who's been lapped. That's going to be interesting. It's interesting in that you don't know, especially when you're in the place of the orange car, Jason, you don't know how aggressive the guy in front of you is going to be in passing a back marker. And what usually happens with me is that if I was in RT's position, the guy ahead of me will just do a crazy fast pass out of nowhere on the on the guy that's being lapped, and uh, I'd be stuck behind him trying not to uh, whack him out of the race myself. So if, uh, if there were flags in the game, we'd be waving a big bright blue one for uh, Gravy Davy. So as to not adversely affect the outcome of this, this race for the second spot. Trying to avoid that as much as we can, but I think Gravy Davey, Gravy Davey will be good in realizing what's going on and perhaps pull over to the side. Still with his windshield wipers going. As they head to, uh, through uh, turn three. Come up to turn four. The uphill left. Don't take that much dirt this time. You're doing the scarier turns in GT. Don't want to have an off there. He's coming up close, going into the corkscrew. Oh, they hit 32s. Did I misread that? RT had a 32.8. Nice. Fast slap of the race. And, yes. As I had previously said, or what I had previously hoped for, Gravy Davy did the good thing and pulled over to the side, let him go by, gave him a nice wave, and off they go into their intense battle with. Only eight laps to go, eight very long laps. Then there's a bump from RT going under the bridge. Starting lap 45, they're going down into the uh, ra <laughs> going down into Andretti Hairpin. He goes wide. All right, and Nepali doesn't know where he is. 
keep him as tight a line as he can to go through cleanly. Another little tap. He is right on the back of Nepali's bumper. Is he really going to go for a pass now? Wow. Let's see what comes of this. He could just be putting the pressure on, uh, purposely staying behind him at the same time, so he could try to scrub off a little more of that rubber off of Nepali's tires. Brings up the question of tire wear. Let's see what the difference is. Adam, same as Nepali, both fighting it in clean air. No, 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 T, just a little better. <laughs> tires are still cold somehow. Oh, I mean, relatively cold. Oh, and they go side by side going to the corkscrew. And RT let it off a little bit so they can get through there nice and sanely. And get through rainy curve. Oh, he's a tight turner to get right. Taking a little of that hard sand. Going up to the last turn down the front straight, and let's see what RT can do with this slingshot this time. You'll definitely get alongside of him next, going into the bottom of the hill in turn one. So, oh, whips around, takes the inside line this time. He has. If all he's keeping a really tight line, off they go side by side, still going into turn two and. This time, Nepali takes the inside, so he'll retake his position as fast as he lost it. Amazing driving there. Very. It looks fun just watching it. I can't imagine the smile on Nepali's face. And side by side almost again. Using that draft to its fullest. This is what it's all about. Even though we had three, is that three disconnections now? Wow, there's only nine. There's only nine dr uh, drivers, tracks, cars, tracks. There are nine drivers left out of the initial twelve. Three drivers down, and that would be uh, Fang or Biffy. I think, yeah, that was Gravy Dave that disconnected or might have rage quit. Here he goes again. Let's see if he gets a second try. Let's see if he, <laughs> whether he goes inside or outside. He's uh, Nepali really sh tried shutting the door as closely as he possibly could. That was tight racing on that last lap. Doing it again. And then Nepali goes a little wider this time, and he's not side by side going into the second turn. And yep, Sherbet and Artsy's got it. It's Nepali's turn. Nepali's turn to give chase. One more thing to consider: uh, RT has a lot of experience in this race itself, driving behind. More, he's better so far. He has more time driving behind a car rather than being in front. So. He will have to adapt his brake points, his uh, line just a little bit, in order to actually stay ahead of Nepali. That's, an, that's another, it's, it's one of the drawbacks of uh, using someone ahead of you to try to conserve your tires. Even though it's the winning strategy most of the time, it's still tough if you don't know how to get right back on it and start driving without a uh, carrot in front of you. This is true racecraft. In almost every aspect. And you're seeing some of the best right here. In the final race of the Flying Me Out of Super Ch Cup Championship finale. This is. This battling's gonna be excited and talking too fast. Let's see if the gaps. Sure, the gap between Adam and the two uh, podium. Guys, is definitely increased. I'd wager a guess at around maybe 15 seconds. No, they caught up. They're only eight seconds behind. What happens? They can and actually. They can probably almost catch a glimpse of Adam as he takes, because they're going through turn. Two. 
three. Like, yep, and they can see him going up the hill in turn four. That's interesting. He must have messed up somewhere along the line because with all of the tussling that RT and Nepali did, he should have pulled away even more, but it's not the case. Although I doubt that they'll be able to catch up to him with four laps remaining. They've been at it for an hour and a quarter. Ali Gobrinsky hates police. Look at that. 32.8, that's an amazing time. I'm sure RT will be happy with that. If he, if he gets the second place and gets the fastest lap, it's, it's a great result. CSL is staying ahead of Outlaws in the two stop rate compared to CSL's one stop. Let's see. That cap's not closing up quickly. Yep. That was right behind him. Shark mode. She's still sweating it so far. Nepali. Whoa! Hard to going a little wide. Not the best way to defend your position, but uh, like I said earlier, he echoes my sentiments in that going from following to leading after you followed so long isn't the easiest but he's adapting well it's just a little bit of a of a possible late breaking mistake on Nazi's part going to turn one three laps left to go Nepali not sh not quite sure what he can depend on either his pace or his RT to slip up like that shaky <laughs> really tight. Nepali looked like he just backed off of the throttle a little bit. He should have been going right around. And he's put the pressure back on. And I was serious about that uh, leading and following thing. Wow. Nepali really didn't seem to jump on that as much as I would have hoped. That was a quick opportunity for a pass, but he... I imagine uh, Nepali was running through uh, his strategy for these next few laps and did not expect RT to mess up like that at all and just kind of caught him off guard. And you kind of say to yourself, oh, he messed up. Oh, there's a crazy turn coming up. Should I pass? And then by the time you've thought that through, it's already done. <laughs> RT has had three pretty sizable offs in this race so far and he's recovered from all three of them amazingly that's uh... that's something that you can't really learn over time it's just an ability that i wish i had he's not the type to uh, throw his arms up after having a little bit of an off so that might be the difference just keep it cool keep your hands on the wheel and uh, throw in that counter steer and it should be good. It's almost like Nepali had that uh, incident with him. Yeah, and the difference in tire wear... Uh, it's actually not pretty much the same. Nepali just has a few percent better. And coming in to white flag and it probably takes a lot of dirt going off in the second to last turn. Huh. I laughed too much. Alright. Ooh, outlaw. He wants it. He wants that fourth place. Oh, forced induction disconnected as well. So that's three. It's forced induction. Biffy, aka Fallen Angle, and Gravy Davy have all sent their regards to good luck guys about whether intentionally disconnecting or not. Nepali is effectively out, falling further and further along. Looks like, yeah, the gap is still around 10 seconds. Adder and increased it in time. Oh, 
Oh! No! The wall! He hit it! <laughs> what is up with that turn, man? <laughs> Are you trying to make this... He's a real showman. It's trying to make a series seem more epic. You don't have to, man. Just stay on the track. <laughs> you got this. Second spot is yours. <laughs> and yet again, Apollo's like, what the fuck? I'm not behind him. Why did he go off? Well, he does too. Just can't help but grab some of that sand on the second to last turn. The white flag. Looks like Outlaw's right on CSL's rear. Going in the last turn. CSL's one stopper might just pay off for a good top five position. Even if he gets passed by a lot, so I'd say that's a success. <laughs> Let's see how uh, Jason handles that turn again. If he goes off again, I'm gonna send him a lengthy PM. Hopefully his brother's not messing with him too much or something. <laughs> As we follow the race leader on his way to championship victory, total shutout to go through the corkscrew. Oh, yeah, he did that turn fine. I knew he would. <laughs> I'd seen Apollo headed to the corkscrew themselves on their way to podium victory. There we go. In the very last race of FMSC3. And our new champion, TTP Adam, who joins the ranks among the greats, R16, R1600 Turbo, the champion, Season 2, and GTP Egghead, champion, Season 1. Three seasons, three champions. Be very successful and very, very fun and addictive racing series. I'm glad you could join us for the final race, and I hope you had fun watching it. I'm going to go ahead and start the podium ceremony. Someone's going to break out the champagne and uh, send it over onto the Adams and Victory Lane team. As we stand up for the British national anthem. British have come again.
maybe if you uh, get a little better, get some more experience under your belt, Paul, I'll be playing for this for you one day.